What's up everybody? Welcome back to the 2300 Gear Jammer channel. We're going to do something a little bit different today and uh, I want to tell the story of where this car came from. I want to talk about the saddest day at the track ever and the slowest passage you could possibly imagine. It was still ended up being fun and where we want this car to go. We got to lay out some goals. I don't typically talk about track goals. There's two kinds of people that we've seen a lot in this world and it's people that talk about going to the track and, and talk about their goals and there's people that go to the track and hit their goals. So I tend to not say anything of what I plan to run, but because we're doing this as a video series, what I'm trying to do is at least explain my thought process through this so you understand why I'm gonna to try to get from A to B. But before I get carried away with the track, which is my favorite part, let's go back to the first day. I was walking through a junkyard and I saw this thing sitting in five foot high weeds and uh, we kind of had to climb over stuff to get to it and the owner of the junkyard saw me looking at it he had already fired up the loader he was ready to to sell it to me before i even got back to ask about it and hopefully you've watched the videos up to this point so you've seen the outside of this car uh, i know what you're going to ask how can you possibly afford something as nice as this a semi-exotic car and honestly I, I was friends with the guy that owned the junkyard and he, he wanted 200 dollars for this thing so it's been 16 years i've only got two payments left and I, we're almost there i don't even get calls about the extended warranty anymore we're getting there so i went home and uh, i got a truck and trailer and when i came back we loaded this thing on the trailer with a forklift we didn't hear it run nothing all we knew about it is it had four flat tires and uh, a, a buddy of mine that was there he said hey i'll bet you 50 bucks you won't run it at the track tonight we only had like three hours so we went and aired up the tires, we put a battery in it, and the thing actually ran. The longer it ran, the better it got. So run some of that old gas out. It was ready to make some smoking fast track passes. And before I get to the video, I need to stress, if you're messing with four cylinder Fords and you're not prepared to make an extremely slow pass and it still be fun, this is the wrong place for you. This is the slowest track pass I have ever made in anything ever. And it was full throttle. It ran clean all the way to the end but it was extremely slow. So we're sitting in staging and I had run the Black Mustang uh, about a year at that point and it was starting to get faster. And uh, as I was working my way through the sevens and the eighth mile, people got used to seeing the Black Mustang and with a 2-3 in it, they just recognized me for doing that. I show up with this thing and didn't tell anybody I was going because, I mean, I just bought the thing a few hours before that and pulled out on the track. Mentally, I drove it just like I would anything else. The difference is it seemed like minutes happened between anything. I'll tell you what, I'll show you. All right, so obviously I didn't do a burnout. I pulled into the lights and I held the brake real tight because this car only has two pedals because it's awful. It's a leaf spring car, so when you give it gas, it kind of lifts up in the back. And then I gave it some throttle. After that pass, I went back to the truck, decided I would actually look at the engine and saw that the distributor was slightly loose. No problem, set it by feel, let it rip. On the second pass, I was confident, calm, collect, we were ready to rock and roll. And I did exactly the same things I did before in the Camaro, Trans Am, whatever it was, in the other lane. This dude took off and I was convinced he was going 590. Keep in mind, this thing had a 2.8 second 60 foot. You can do that in a school bus. This guy's going down the track. And I was convinced he was going to run 590, easy 590. And it shows his time, and it was 830s, I think. 830 in the eighth. Whew. And I was amazed that my best pass of the night ended up being a 1358 at 53 miles an hour. Think about how slow that is, and you can run that in anything. It was probably the cheapest pass I've ever made. 
A buddy gave me $50 just because we thought it would be funny. Right now, 1350 in the eighth mile is the number to beat. So I feel like tuned up with a T5, Trevor should be able to do that. We should be in pretty good shape. Now for me, my goals are different. I've been doing this for a long time. I've made quite a few track passes. So Trevor, we're gonna start him and see if he can outrun the 1350, and I hope he can, and then move up from there and up from there. We will get him to making some decent track passes. Again, for me, I really hate talking about goals, but here we go. So, I mean, I put a 10 point cage in it that's good to 850. Uh, it's a short wheelbase car. I don't really plan to try to run that kind of number with it. I wanna keep it fairly simple with whatever we've got. A good goal that I thought would be worth chasing is nines in the quarter mile with a completely stock junkyard, unopened four cylinder T5. Now, a lot of people say they won't hold more than 235 foot pounds or whatever's on their chart that they're looking at that day, but that's wrong. If you have the right clutch and you can drive it and you can get everything adjusted right and you can go in steps, you can go fairly fast. That being said, I went 10 years and never broke a T5 and then broke three in three weeks, figured out what the problem was, and that was 11 years ago. I haven't broken one since, so, but this is a pretty lofty goal, so I've piled up every T5 I can come up with. Uh, I've got buddies saving them for me. If I kill them all trying to hit this goal, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It's a fairly lofty goal, but I, the plan right now is to try to put a completely stock, unopened junkyard transmission in the nines, and that that's my personal goal for this whole car. We'll start there see what else we want to do. Should we do mine first? Should we start with Trevor and get Trevor caught up and, and he can kind of drive it as we go? Or do you think I should go ahead and put the engine and transmission out of the black Mustang in this car and just run it and try it? Leave some comments about the order you want us to do things in and, and maybe we can work it in. Right now, nothing's set in stone, so we can change it as we go. All right, last thing for this video. I've always posted part numbers for the entire car on websites, uh, the Stinger Performance website. You can find the original build for my black Mustang. For these videos though, leave some comments for this too. Tell me what you think. I may start a scroll at the end and with every video, I will add part numbers to it. So by the time we get to the end, we'll have a full list of part numbers for the entire car. Nothing hidden. What we break, we break. We'll see all of it. And what ends up on the car for different levels will all be in the video. But leave some comments on how you think I should post part numbers. Hopefully that'll help somebody see what parts I use as we go. All right, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you've already liked it. You've already subscribed and you're already caught up on the other videos. So start looking for part numbers at the end to show up and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.